The Korean War left the U.S. extremely sensitive about communist expansion in Asia. And in the mid-1960s, in a little-known corner of Southeast Asia, their new infantry superweapon, the space-aged M16, ended up battling its most deadly adversary, Russia's legendary AK-47, weapon of choice of the North Vietnamese. Both sides felt they had the winning ideology, and the technology of the weapons was a simple reflection of their global ambitions. The prize, in other words, was the world. Both sides already had accurate and reliable infantry rifles that had done great service in World War II. The bad news was they could only fire one bullet at a time. To fill the air with lead, the submachine gun was the weapon of choice. But unlike the rifle, hitting a target beyond 50 yards was more luck than judgment. The assault rifle, half machine gun and half rifle, was designed to do the job of both. The Soviet and American assault rifles were very different designs. As a test of whether communist or capitalist technology was better, Vietnamese combat conditions were ideal. You were not able to see your enemy. You were in a jungle environment where all you were seeing was muzzle flashes or maybe some smoke. You didn't have a clearly defined target, so you would have an area target which you would spray with ammunition to keep your enemy's head down. Basically, it's whoever lays down a heavier volume of fires who's going to win. It's firepower that counts. And with an assault weapon, you've got firepower. Firepower could keep you alive. And soldiers developed very close relationships with their guns. As an army infantryman, this is sort of like an extension of my arm. It was always close to me. I would never go anywhere or think about going anywhere without reaching for my weapon. Even the construction of the AK-47 and M16 revealed deep differences between East and West. In 1990, seven years before his death, M16 designer Eugene Stoner gave a rare interview with AK-47 designer Mikhail Kalashnikov. In it, he recalls how U.S. demands for a super light weapon forced him to make radical advances in the M16's construction. That meant choosing lightweight materials right from the beginning, aluminum in place of steel, fiberglass and construction in place of wood. This is really space-age stuff. It's made out of plastic. It's made out of composite material, early composites. The buffer that's in here is a composite. So it's, this is sort of space age. In the 1960s, the M16 looked like a kid's toy. We had nicknamed this thing the Matty Mattel, you know, made by a toy gun manufacturer. I mean, when it first came out, that's what it looked like. It looked like something that a kid would play with, and it was, you know, no wood. You know, and this, you know, we thought, oh, it's still cheap, cheap plastic, you know, this kind of thing. So for us initially, that was the joke. That was our, our toy gun. The Kalashnikov is a far more traditional gun. The AK-47 is of rather conventional design using common materials, steel and wood, and readily available machining technology. The parts are manufactured to uh, less precision, from an engineering standpoint, it is a uh, low-tech weapon. This means that for automatic fire, the M16 is much easier to control than the AK-47. Slowed down 14,000 times, it's clear that the kick or recoil of the high-precision M16 moves it very little. Not the AK-47. It's throwing itself around. Look at the end of the barrel. It's clearly flexing up and down. One reason for this wobbly performance is the way it works. What's happening when this is fired is, of course, the cycle rate's fairly high, and you've got a really big hunk of metal coming back, and it's slightly off-center. Not much, but slightly off-center. So th this thing's coming back and then coming back forward, so you've got really two violent acts going on, and then if you have the round going off, you have a third violent act going on. The M16, on the other hand, this is a much smoother operating weapon. Consequently, the accuracy on this 
in full automatic fire is a lot better than is the AK. An easy round one to the M16, a higher precision weapon and far easier to handle as a machine gun. Can the AK-47 claw ground back with its performance as a rifle, rated by accuracy, not controllability? We've come to Morris County, New Jersey. The Picatinny Arsenal is where the U.S. Army puts their small arms to the test. We've set up targets at about 200 yards. It's an easy distance for a decent rifle. First up is the M16. What we're looking for is grouping, how close the shots are to each other. Every shot strikes close to the heart, in the kill zone. Now, the AK-47. Only one of the five shots even tags the lower left edge of the paper. Not one strikes the kill zone. And it's clear from the design of the sights that the American weapon was designed to be more accurate from the very start. The sights are very good. Uh, you have a little peep sight here in the back, okay, which you can use for short range. And what you could do is you can actually flip it forward. And if you look on the back, you can actually see an L. That's for long distance. In the front, you have just a post with what we call bunny ears, which flare out. And what you do is you center your post in the center of your uh, rear sight, and you put it right on target, and you fire, and you should hit target. The AK sight is very crude. It's not as good as the peep sights that the Americans have been using since World War II. You take your front post, and you line it up with the little notch right here, and the top of the front post and the top of this bar will be level and you set your target right on top of those three points. This weapon really isn't meant to shoot out 400 meters. You've got to have really good ammunition, a good barrel, uh, nice steady hand, a good eye, and no wind conditions to, to shoot out any distance like that. If you do hit somebody at that distance, it'll hurt, but uh, you're not necessarily going to be able to do it every time. Out in open terrain, that extra accuracy could give the M16 a decisive advantage. Round two to the M16, an easier machine gun, a more accurate rifle. The much like World War II rifle ammunition seemed an obvious choice for America's first lightweight assault rifle. But the powerful recoil of the old ammunition made their new featherweight M14 dangerously uncontrollable as a machine gun. This is so light, you cannot control it. So the, the, the first round, if you were to fire this fully automatically, the first round would be there, the second round would be there, the third round would be there. And anything after that, it's an anti-aircraft gun. To make a handheld automatic weapon, the designers would need ammunition with less recoil or kick. The gun's success would stand or fall on the design of the bullet. The Soviet solution was brutally simple. Take the heavy old rifle bullet and make it shorter and therefore lighter. The M16 uses a smaller, slimmer bullet. With far less recoil than the AK, the M16 gun can weigh barely two-thirds as much as the AK-47, which was exactly what the U.S. military wanted, as Eugene Stoner explained to AK-47 designer Mikhail Kalashnikov. Basically, they wanted the lightest weight system that they could get. They wanted a weapon that would weigh six pounds, loaded with 20 rounds of ammunition. The weight was the driving emphasis on the whole design. In other words, there are a lot of things maybe you would like to do, but couldn't do because of the weight restraints. The Army people are the same everywhere. They want you to come up with weightless weapons, but there is a limit to everything. Yeah, they like to defy the laws of physics. <laughs> the tiny bullet that Stoner came up with to save weight, the M16 extra accuracy because it travels faster. Faster bullets are more accurate. In addition, this little round weighs half as much as a Kalashnikov's lump of lead, 
which gives the M16 another combat advantage, lightweight. Lighter is always better. I mean, it is. Yeah, that's the bottom line, especially if, if you're the guy that has to carry it. The M16 round at 5.56 is a lighter, smaller round compared to the 7.62 that's used in the AK-47. What that means, really, is the capability to carry more rounds, which is what you need when you have an automatic weapon system, you know, because you go through rounds fairly quickly. I carried as much ammo as I could physically carry and run. Any place on my body, there was ammo. Ammo in my flag jacket, ammo in my pants, ammo in my ammo belt, any place. My greatest fear is that I would run out of ammo, and, and I was not going to let that happen. To compete, AK-47 soldiers had to sacrifice everything, even food. In a real combat situation, a soldier must not take an additional can of sardines, but an extra cartridge. That gives the American M16 a powerful lead over the Soviet AK-47, with technical superiority in three key areas, range, accuracy, and weight. But real combat is a different world. On the battlefields of Vietnam, the AK-47 strengths begin to tell. In the close combat conditions of Vietnam, where the Soviet AK-47 in the hands of the North Vietnamese met the American M16 assault rifle, the M16's biggest advantage, better range, wasn't much use. The reality is a basic soldier with iron sights can't shoot that far when he's shooting at an opponent that knows he's being shot at and is trying to do everything he can not to be shot. So, uh, you know, the most engagements really are, are 300 meters on in. In fact, the long-range accuracy of the M16 hadn't evolved from the requirements of modern combat at all, but from American traditions rooted firmly in the past. There was a myth that grew up about the American rifle. Uh, it won the revolution. Well, it didn't, but nonetheless, there's a myth. And throughout American history, it's this one-shot, one-kill mentality that has been a very big part in American military history. To neutralize the M16's range advantage, the North Vietnamese chose close combat techniques. Their standard tactic was to do what they called hold on to our belt buckle. They would try to get as close to us as they possibly could and achieve fire superiority on us so that we couldn't use the weapons that we had. They were real good at it. They were real good. My father fought in Vietnam, and he told me stories of being so close to his opponent that, in fact, they crossed rifles. Uh, so, you know, the fight became very close. In close quarters battles, the M16's better accuracy could not guarantee victory. Though less accurate, the AK-47 had the advantage of a simple, easy-to-maintain construction. Like much of the equipment used by Russia and Vietnam, it was brutally low-tech. The M16's first half superiority has been checked by the AK-47's remarkable advantage of simplicity. And if the battles deteriorated into hand-to-hand -hand combat, the AK also had an advantage in its heavy wood and iron construction. Machine guns made from those materials can also be used for hand-to-hand -hand combat. You can really smack someone with it. Whereas with the M16, its butt and barrel were made from fiberglass. If you hit someone hard with it, it would break. So it is used more for shooting. Hand fighting is feasible only with a Kalashnikov. Another round to the AK-47. And the M16's troubles weren't over yet, because the gun had been sent to Vietnam with ammunition it wasn't designed for. The explosive propellant that drives the bullet out of the gun had been changed to a dirty type that gummed up the works. The M16 was jamming in combat. When it deployed, the powder mixture was changed. It was changed to a mixture called ball powder. It's the stuff the United States Army has used forever. It works. It also fouls. Because of the powder, fouling 
he had failure to fire, and you were in a lot of trouble. If the gun failed, cleaning this dirty fouling out was the only answer. But soldiers had been told that the gun was so sophisticated, it didn't need cleaning at all, to the anger of designer Eugene Stoner. The Army didn't furnish any training manuals. They didn't even have a, a bore brush or a cleaning rod for these weapons, and they issued 85,000 of them. A gun that needs cleaning in combat could cost soldiers their lives. The military had to find a way to make sure soldiers cleaned their weapons. Their solution was an unusual training manual. This has Connie Rod. Uh, Connie is a buxom young lady. And, um, well, most 19-year-olds, uh, I can remember when I was 19, and it certainly uh, caught my attention. And uh, I like to read about Connie Rod, and it's sort of comic bookish. Shoot, people read a comic book. They won't read a field manual. Field manuals, let's face it, they're dull. Because of the closely fitting parts, weapons cleaning would have to be as second nature as breathing to keep the M16 in working order. You cleaned your weapon before you did anything else. You cleaned your weapon before you ate. You cleaned your weapon before you cleaned your socks. Oh, by the way, you have to make Marines change their socks by the numbers. So consequently, you also have to make Marines clean their weapon by the numbers too. No comic books were necessary for the low-tech AK-47. Clean or not, it would always fire. If it is not cleaned properly, it will not shoot so well, but it will shoot. The tolerances in that weapon are so sloppy. You still have to clean it, but it's not as vital. Soldiers had to come up with some very low-tech solutions to protect their high-tech M16s from the dirt, sand, and water they faced in the hostile Vietnamese environment. But no matter how careful they were, it was far easier to make an M16 jam than an AK-47. The close fit between the M16 assault rifle's parts meant that any dirt or debris that got near the gun would be trouble. We were in Chulai area, and I was digging a hole in the sand. Next thing, a tree line opens up on us, and everyone's firing back, and I lunged for my rifle, and when I did, it was somewhat laying like this, enough that I knew it was out of the sand, but when I grabbed it, I covered it with the sand, and as soon as I raised it to my shoulder, and I pulled the trigger, all I heard was a click. I'm already panicking at this point. I mean, I'm, I'm a Lance Corporal. This is my first real firefight, and uh, the round didn't go off. Sand was no hazard to the AK-47. In fact, it had been part of its original Army trials. I can give you an example of these types of trials. At the very last stage, the prototypes were hung up by ropes and dragged along sand. And after that, without any sort of cleaning, they were fired. In an environment like Vietnam, debris jamming the close-fitting parts of the M16 meant it could never match the loosely built AK-47's stunning reliability. I can suggest you pour cement into it or drive over it with a tank. That will break it. Reliability had been the goal of the gun's designer, Mikhail Kalashnikov, from the outset. My credo was then, and has remained throughout my career, Simple and dependable. Simplicity and fantastic reliability. Two more advantages of the AK-47 over the M16. The AK-47's heavier bullet may be slower and less accurate, but its sheer power is indisputable. We've set up these cinder blocks to simulate the wall of a building in a combat zone. First, the M16 quite impressive. And now the AK-47. We've also simulated a jungle environment with this 8-inch block dense pine. At 28 yards, the M16 bullet fails to penetrate. And the AK-47?
This extra punch is no test range trick. Out in the dense jungle in close quarters ambushes, it could be fatal. And it brings the AK-47 right back into contention. which leaves the M16 and the AK-47 level pegging, playing different strengths and weaknesses against each other. Assault rifles can be better as rifles or as machine guns. They'll always be a design trade-off. The M16 is closer to a rifle, the AK-47 a machine gun. And you can see it clearly in the fire selector switch. The AK-47, when you start in the upper position, you're in the safe position. It also works as a dust cover. You drop down one notch, you're on fully automatic. Next notch is semi-automatic. This is primarily a machine gun. It's to be used on fully automatic. Where with an M16, your selector lever goes to the safe position, to the semi-position, to the automatic position. The M16 was designed as a rifle with a fully automatic capability. Making the M16 something of a surgical tool, the AK-47 a blunt stick. The Cold War that produced these two assault rifles may be over, but wars, as well as the war between these rifles themselves, rage on. The M16 is a precision instrument for the well-trained soldier, still used by professional armies across the globe. The rudimentary AK-47 in the hands of poor or untrained soldiers continues to demonstrate its effectiveness in worldwide battle, contrary to the wisdom that high technology rules. Regardless, the performance of the weapon will always depend on the war being fought and on the skills of those who are fighting it.